Developers, do you ever find yourself wanting to access your local by flywheel WordPress sites from another machine on your LAN or your local network? Well, with a little creativity, it can be done. Hey, I'm Megan, a web developer and website strategist. I do three things on my blog and this channel. Number one, I teach web designers and developers how to improve their development skills. I educate business owners on conversion optimization and website strategy for number two. And for number three, I help brand designers build out beautiful functional websites for their clients without stressing over the code. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how I hacked my way to local sites that I can easily access from my laptop even though they're actually hosted on my iMac. You should be able to follow along and replicate my setup. So before I dive in, a warning, proceed with caution. If you don't follow these instructions exactly, you could render your local sites inaccessible. Make sure you're comfortable with the tasks at hand before you begin. And keep in mind that this guide and video pertains to OSX. So if you're using another operating system, you'll probably need to change the instructions. I recommend that you check out the written instructions in the blog post that goes along with this video before you get started, and you can find a link to that in the description box below. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is download and install some additional software. In this case, it's VirtualBox and the VirtualBox extension pack. So here you can see I'm on the VirtualBox downloads page. That is at virtualbox.org slash wiki slash downloads and I'll include a link to this in the description box and in the blog post. So you want to come over here under VirtualBox binaries and in VirtualBox platform packages you want to select the appropriate link for your operating system. For me that's OSX. Just click on that, download it, and run the installer package. So once you have the VirtualBox binary downloaded, you just follow the instructions in the installer. It's super easy. All right, as you can see, my installation was successful. Now we're going to go to the Applications folder and we should be able to run VirtualBox. And this is kind of what it looks like. So now we want to go back to the VirtualBox downloads page and get the extension pack. So just look for the Oracle VM VirtualBox extension pack. And then you want to click the All Supported Platforms link. Go ahead and download that. When that download finishes, just install it and VirtualBox will take care of the installation. You don't have to worry about um, downloading a specific version of the extension pack for your operating system because the one version of the extension pack works on everything. Okay, we have to accept the license agreement for the extension pack. Okay, and when it's successfully installed, you should get a little success message there in VirtualBox. Now, what we're going to do is edit our local by flywheel virtual machines network settings. So we have the VirtualBox window open here, and if you don't, just go into your applications and open up VirtualBox. We're going to look for this virtual machine right here. It's named Local by Flywheel, all lowercase. And then we're going to open up this virtual machine settings. You can either click this little settings icon right here above the VM or right click and select settings. Now we're going to go into the network tab and it has a little icon that looks like two monitors with it. There should already be something in adapters 1 and 2 that's kind of a part of the local by flywheel setup. So we're going to go into adapter 3. 
and you want to kind of copy the settings that I have here. So you want to make sure enable network adapter is checked. In the attach to menu, you want to select bridge adapter. This name um, drop down here is probably going to have some different options for you, but you want to look for the Wi-Fi airport, essentially the wireless networking option. And then in this advanced settings area, click this cable connected box, make sure it's checked. And you're going to hit OK to save your settings. The next thing we're going to do is restart our local My Flywheel virtual machine and make note of the IP address that we see there. So local is not already on for me, so you can see I have a start button here. Um, if local is already running, you'll see a show button instead. Either one is fine. You can click that button right there or right click on your VM and click either start or show. All right, as you can see, it brings up a little window and this is your local by flywheel virtual machine. I'm gonna just give it a minute to boot in all the way. This would be a little bit faster if local is already running for you. So if you have the show button versus the start button so this is a screen you're looking for to make sure that the machine is fully booted. You want to see the little boot to docker and the whale. And you can see your prompt right here is ready to go. So what you want to do is in this bottom toolbar, come over to the little icon of the two monitors again. Um, the same icon that was on the network settings tab. You're going to look under adapter 3, so bridged adapter, and write down that IP address. So in this case, mine is 192.168.1.14. Make sure you note down this IP address because this is what we're going to be using on our other computer to basically tell it where to find your local sites. So now you can come up and close your virtual machine window when you're prompted, hit save the machine state. And say OK. It'll save and close that window. Now you want to headless start your virtual machine, which means it starts up without that window. So under the start button, you can click the little arrow and hit headless start, or you can right click, go to start, and hit headless start. So make sure you do that that uh, essentially gets your local virtual machine going in its normal state. And now if you'll give me just a moment, I'm going to switch to my other computer so I can demonstrate step four. All right, now I have switched to my other computer, which is my MacBook Pro, and I'm gonna show you how to complete the steps that you'll need to do on any other machines that you want to access your local sites from. So before we get started, make sure on your host computer that contains your local by flywheel installation, you go and start up local if it's not already started. So the first thing we're going to do is make some changes to the host file on our computer. So the easiest way to do this is using the terminal. And don't be intimidated if you're not really comfortable with the terminal. I'll show you exactly what to do. This is not that complicated, I promise. So I'm going to open up my terminal. There we go. It's a little bit bigger, easier to see. So to access our host file, we're going to type in first sudo. That tells our computer that we need to access this file with super user privileges, essentially. Then we're going to type in nano. That's N-A-N-O. That is just the name of a text editor for the terminal that I like. <laughs> then we're going to type in our path, which is slash, etc. So etc, another slash, and hosts. Type enter. It'll prompt you for the password for your current user. Go ahead and type that in and press enter. And you won't see anything popping up on your screen when you type in your password. That's normal. 
So I already have a lot of stuff in my host file. <laughs> Yours probably won't have nearly as much stuff, but that's okay. So what you wanna do is add a new line in this file for each local site that you want to access. So I'm gonna scroll down here and see right here, this plugin.test is one of my local sites from my iMac. And I want to be able to access it on my MacBook Pro. As you can see, the IP address there is 192.168.1.13. That was an older IP address before I showed you guys how to <laughs> change the settings on your local VM. So now I need to update that. So I'm going to type in instead 192.168.1.14. This is the IP address that I noted earlier when I changed Local's networking settings and hovered over the little network monitors icon. This is the IP that came up under Bridged Adapter, the one I told you to note down. That's what you want to enter first. Then a tab, and you want to type in the domain for your local site. For me, that's plugin.test. For you, it's whatever, whatever you use to access your local site in the browser. So you want to repeat this for every site that you want to be able to access, every one of your local sites that you want to be able to access from this other computer. And when you're done, you hit Control X, that tells Nano that you want to exit the file. Then it essentially asks you if you want to save the file, just hit Y for yes, and then hit Enter to use the same file name. And that's all it takes to update your host file. Now what you want to do is test and make sure you can actually view your local site from this other computer. So I'm going to open up Chrome here and I'm typing in HTTP colon slash slash plugin dot test. And now I'm going to take it just a second to connect the first time. Ta-da! Here is my testing site. And it looks just the same here as it does when I access it on my iMac. I have all the same permissions. I can log in and use the dashboard, anything that I want to do that I can do from the browser on my iMac, I can do now from my MacBook Pro as well. And just as a note for you here, Sometimes after local restarts on your original machine, you'll need to double check those networking settings. So your bridge adapter may have been assigned a new IP address by your router when local restarted, in which case you'll need to repeat this step number four, changing your host file with the new IP address. So if your local sites are no longer viewable from your other computer and they used to be, always check this first. Make sure you're still using the correct IP address. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Once you set this up one time, it's really easy to, you know, repeat the process on as many other machines as you want on your local network. So before I go, I'm going to give you a few tips for editing local sites on other machines. So to simplify my development process, I use file sharing between my two Macs. That way I don't have to keep an extra copy of all the site files on my MacBook Pro. I just access them, um, access the files that are stored directly on my iMac using file sharing. I also use SSH to access um, Git and Gulp on my iMac. And then I use the iOS simulator or Android emulator for preliminary mobile testing. That way I don't have to worry about uploading my local sites to somewhere, you know, publicly accessible on the web just to get started with mobile testing. So were you able to access your local sites from another machine after following along with the tutorial? Let me know. Again, be really careful before you get started with this and make sure you check out the blog post for written instructions. If you're looking for other ways to improve your web development process, give a look to the web developers tech toolbox that I have created and there's a um, 
form where you can get this for free at the bottom of the blog post that I talked about earlier and linked in the description box. The Web Dev Tech Toolbox gives you a starting point for improving your development workflow and saving yourself some coding time, which who doesn't want to save themselves some time? So thanks for watching. I will see you next time.